Hey, welcome to the table. We're gonna play the search for Planet X. I got one of my boys here with me. Uh, this is a multiplayer game, it's not solitaire. So it would be very difficult to play solitaire unless you just enjoy the puzzle aspect of it, which I don't think is, I mean, I think it's fun, but I don't think it'd be that much fun to play solitaire. I don't think I would recommend ever buying it just for that purpose, um, but it is fun, I think, to do the puzzles. Um, okay, so what is this game about? Well, first of all, uh, this is going to be a very quick series because I'm trying to finish uh, introducing you to the game so we can get playing here. And um, basically the board has sectors on it. And each of those sectors is these pie-shaped wedges and they're numbered. Now what you're looking at here is the expert side. There's a basic or beginner side that only has 12 sectors. We're playing the expert side. It has 18. Uh, after you play the basic game a couple of times, I think you'll agree that the that the, uh, the 18 sectors is quite a bit more challenging and fun. So uh, what happens is, is this is our, our visible sky. So the visible sky starts from here and goes to there. And uh, what's the goal of the game? Well, one of these 18 sec each of these 18 sectors has something in it. Something, I will describe what that something means later in a bit, but, but there's something in each sector, and there's only one thing in each sector, okay? There's never more than one thing. So this is a logic game, and I'm gonna prepare you with some of the logic here. In one of these sectors is Planet X, and that's what we're trying to find, is where is Planet X? And it's not just enough to know where Planet X is, you gotta also know where what's on both sides of Planet X. So let's say this was Planet X, you need to know what's here and here as well. So um, you can't just get, take a wild guess and win the game. Um, another interesting thing is, is sometimes if you get Planet X, Planet X correct, like the last game I played of this, I was the only one that found Planet X actually, and I lost the game. Because uh, you score points in other ways than just finding Planet X, and I didn't score enough points in those other ways. Um, uh, so, when, what you see here is um, there are um, there's symbols on the board that uh, are basically, um, if you've ever played the game Alchemist, there's some stuff that's shared. But basically, um, as we take our turn, this thing's going to spin around. And the visible sky is relevant on some of the actions that we do. But as it spins around, we're going to cross these little symbols that you see on the board. This means that it's time for us to place a theory. Um, in a basic game, you'll only ever get to place one, but in the expert game, you can place two. Um, so that's one difference you're gonna notice. Um, and then this is a Planet X conference here. That's the first one. And then the second one is here. So you'll see that says X2. Now, uh, with all that in mind, uh, let's show you the sheet. This is sort of like your clue or any other game where we're going to have like a secret sheet where we're going to write down uh, relevant stuff. And uh, here I would list the players I'm playing against. Um, and then I would uh, list the actions and that they took because sometimes what they're doing is important information for me. And uh, and then down here I, um, I have uh, what's called research. There's a research uh, in the game and there's research A through F. The game uses an app, by the way, and the app will tell you what the research is going to be. And if let's say I select X, this is where I would write down my notes. And then of course there's two conference spots. The scoring is along the bottom. And the big important thing to understand is if you find Planet X, you get 10 points. And then the other players get one chance to find Planet X after the first player does. And depending on how far back they are on time. So if I'm here, and I get Planet X, and my son is three behind me. He is three time behind me. So we would go uh, one, two, three, he would get six points. And then if you're five time behind, you would actually get 10 points, just as many as the first player did. So there's some scoring here, and you can see uh, there's uh, dwarf planets, you get two points each. Gas clouds, four, comets, three, asteroids, two. And being the first to guess a spot correctly gives you a bonus point. Um, in the basic game, the dwarf planet is worth four points because there's only one. 
Now, uh, to dive in a little quicker with uh, probably something I should have showed you at first, every sector is one of these things. It's either a comet, an asteroid, a dwarf planet, a gas cloud, an empty sector, or planet X. Okay, it's only ever going to be one of these things. And this is one of those classic games where if you know that this is not a comet, you can cross it out. And then there's spots that can't be comets. So you can see here, there's only certain spots that have comets on them. So that's another uh, factor in the game. And then they give you logic rules. Okay, so um, comets, for example, are only in particular sectors. I just showed you that on the map. The asteroids can only be adjacent to at least one other asteroid. So um, there's four asteroids total. So every asteroid you find will be adjacent to at least one other asteroid. So they're usually in pairs. Um, and then uh, you have dwarf planets, and they're going to be in a band of six. Four of them, four dwarf planets, are in a band of six, and they're never adjacent to planet X. So if I have a dwarf planet here, the other three are going to be within six of each other. Um, the gas clouds are always adjacent to at least one empty sector. Planet X is never adjacent to the dwarf, and if you were to scan for it, uh, it'll appear as an empty sector. It looks like an empty sector for purposes of the game. Um, and then there's five truly empty sectors, and, uh, and it's reminding you that X appears empty. So what's technically going to happen is it's gonna look like there's six empty sectors, but one of the empty sectors is Planet X. So, um, the expert game gets a little tricky because in the basic game, just to give you a basic idea, there's only two truly empty sectors and there's two gas clouds. So it's pretty easy to figure out, okay, this one's next to a gas cloud, that one's next to a gas cloud. Oh, the third one is not next to a gas cloud. That one is planet X, right? It's pretty easy to, to get to that conclusion. Not so when there's five of them <laughs> and there's still only two gas clouds. So um, uh, anyways, uh, that's... Uh, in a nutshell, what the logic of the game is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start up this game, we're gonna play in expert mode, and we're gonna do the four clues from the start. Oh, Josh wants to do zero clues from the start. Okay, so we'll maybe do that. And, um, and uh, yeah, this is a giant logic game. I actually have good fun with this. I, I really enjoy it. And um, I need to grab a pen here, make sure it works. And it does, and I'm going to put my sun down, and uh, the game also comes with a very good, like a, a shield that you need to, uh, to hide, um, uh, and so uh, what you see here is uh, like various actions um, that... Uh, it's basically explaining what the actions do. The thing that's really important here is when it's your turn, you get to do any one of these actions. We'll talk about that when our turn starts. Um, and then the actions will take up time. And that's a key factor in this game. Everything else here is just a repeat of all the logic we just went through. And then on the right is when somebody finally finds Planet X, what's their end game score? Okay, um, so... Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, you also come with these, and what these are for is these are for your theories, and they are a way, uh, a primary way to score points. And like I said, I got Planet X correct last time and still lost, and it's because my son was able to put his theories out correctly and I wasn't. Um, what's funny is these theories, even if you're wrong, they give you valuable information. And um, I was so focused on Planet X, I pulled that part off, but I, I didn't get the win. So everybody starts on Space One. I mean, you would determine who. I'll go ahead and let Josh go first. I don't mind. And um, we're ready to get going. And just one second, Josh. I have... Um... I'm texting someone uh, because we're going to be using my other device and I don't want them to be texting me. They're sending me some personal stuff. One second. Uh, OK, 
Can you shut the door? All right, we're getting ready to start here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so the game comes with an app. And so it's called Search for Planet X. And uh, did you start the game or? So he started a game, so I'm gonna enter a code. And what's the code? R7Z4. R7Z4? Mm -hmm. So we enter a code. And there we go, we're in. Okay, so I'm gonna hit continue. And I think I'm gonna lay this flat. So that way it's easier for you guys to see. Oh, there's a bit of a glare. All right, so what it's asking is, do I want, you know, which season am I doing? And it, it's just men, it's just a matter of um, uh, direction. Because when you're sitting around the game board, I have the summer, I'm on the summer side of the game board. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, in fact, you gave me a spring sheet. He doesn't care. <laughs> So you just tell it you're in the summer solstice. And then here you can see, um, I'm going to set it back up because the glare is too bad. So the next step is they to ask you what kind of um, difficulty level. And what it is, is um, we used to play experienced where they give you four facts. Like the four fact might be sector two is not an asteroid. Like it's usually the facts they give you are something is not here. We're gonna do genius, which means we start with no facts. So um, this is new for us, but I think we can handle it. And uh, the other disclaimer is, is that we're not claiming to be experts at this game. So uh, no uh, nerds out there telling us how we could have been more efficient. Okay, so we have research A through F and then two conferences. Conferences happen automatically. We don't have to worry about those. But this is just um, ways to get more information. Remember, when it's our turn, we can do one of several things. We can survey, we can target, we can research, or we can locate Planet X. Those are the four things we can do. And research is a very valuable and low cost uh, one to do. So uh, Josh, uh, you're making me go first? I'll go first. He's going first. So what are you doing? Researching gas clouds. So he just did um, research gas clouds, All right? And that was which one? That was um, D. So he just did research D, okay? So you write down your notes however you want, but all I know is he researched gas clouds. I don't get to see his answer. I just know that that's what he did. And you can see there that he moved up one time and we gotta set this back. Like so. So after um, time phase three, um, we're going to have to, or there's an opportunity to put out some theories. Okay, so, uh, so that's what he did. And I'm gonna do a similar thing. And this is really interesting because Josh and I have completely different ways we approach the game. And we usually get Planet X around the same time. He always goes for those gas clouds. And Josh, you can tell them what I always go for. What is that? The comets. The comets, exactly. So I'm gonna do research as well, and I'm gonna go after comets. All right, so reveal information, and this is what they tell me. All right, so I'm gonna put camera down here so I can write. Okay, I know my writing's not that good, but uh, basically I wrote down my clue. And <clears throat> remember there's 18 sectors on the board. So uh, that's where we're at. And so I move up one time, just like Josh. And uh, technically the person that's first should be in the back. So, okay, so now he's up again. And when you do a research like he and I just did, we get this message, you're never allowed to do it two times in a row. Research is one of those ones, it only costs one time to do research, whereas everything else costs more than one time. 
and and uh, who goes next is based on who's furthest back in time. So uh, right now, Josh and I are tied again, so he goes first. And what did you just do? I just surveyed for gas clouds. Okay, and then uh, what did you survey? Two to ten. Okay, so let me write this down. <clears throat> okay, so what he did was he surveyed two to ten for gas clouds. And two to ten is here to here. When you do the survey action, sometimes it limits you to, to the visible daylight. Was that the case with gas clouds? Yeah. That was, okay. It's only with comets. And, and with comets. Oh, comets is the only one that's an exception, right? So uh, when you do surveys, you got to use your visible timeline. So, and then survey, if you do one, two, or three sectors, it costs four time, three time, or two. And you did the one that only cost two, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you can survey a bigger section uh, that takes less time, but obviously it gives you less information. Now, what does survey do? He said he surveyed for gas clouds. It tells him the exact number of gas clouds that are found in those sectors. So um, you can never survey for an empty sector, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I was thinking of doing something similar. So I'm going to survey. And based on information that we have, um, so it tells you, uh, you can only survey in the visible sky, and I'm going to survey for a comet. And my start sector is going to be 2, and I can go up to 10, although it always lets me go up beyond that. I don't know why, but I'm going to... Because you're surveying for comets. You can do the entire sky. It didn't say that though. Whenever I went in the survey action, it said only visible. Hmm. Well. It's okay. I'm gonna just do two through seven. And that's gonna cost me three time. And as you can see, there's our answer. All right, so, so then I'm gonna take my So then I, I write down that answer. And um, so just to help you to look at the board, or you can even look at my sheet. You can see we went from here to here. Okay, and we found that many. And then with our other clue, um, that really doesn't help me to eliminate much. <laughs> so. Right color. All right, so uh, so I moved up three time. Josh moved up two, and then now we are. This wheel just keeps spinning based on where we are in time, so it stops here because this is where Josh is. But we have to do this first, and we can put theories out on the board. And it starts with Josh because he's further back in time than me. So what would you like to do? I. I don't think I'm going to put any out. You know what? Neither am I. <laughs> um, one thing I've learned, because uh, if you put out these theories um, and you're wrong, they, they exit the game. So their chances to score points, um, sometimes having them be wrong is helpful because it gives you information. But I lost my last game because I spammed a bunch of them out there. Um, What'd you do? I researched dwarf and gas clouds. And that was what? What letter? F. F? Yeah. Okay, and so he just did a research, so he goes up one, and that means it's now my turn. And I'm gonna do a research as well. Let me bring the camera over, and let's see what else we can figure out here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do E, Asteroids and Comets. So there you go. All right, so we did, uh, give me a second while I write. So 
so within E, I wrote down the clue. So that is very helpful once we figure out where these comets are. All right, so the time moved up, and uh, Josh is up. And right here is another theory thing that we got to do. So, um, what did you just do? I targeted nine. Okay. So what Josh did is he did a target, and he put out that metal coin, because you're only able to do two targets a game. And so a target costs four time, which is a, a very hefty cost in time. However, uh, it told him exactly what's in nine. Um, so he knows exactly what's there, and um, that is very helpful, of course. But you only get to do it twice in a game. All right, so now it comes up to here. And I'm actually going... So I know I can't talk much because uh, Josh is sitting right here. But I want you to look at the, the possibilities here. Uh, we went from here to there. So two through seven, we scanned. Now the visible sky is six, which is here through 14. And so I'm actually gonna do another scan. The problem I have is Ugh. It doesn't eliminate much unless I scan a shorter period. Yeah, I'm going to do a survey. Let me zoom you out a little. We'll do a survey, and I'm going to go for those comets again. And we start at 6, so I'm going to start at 7. And I'm going to go to... I could go to 13. I'm going to go to 11. And there's our answer. Okay. So. And that cost me three time. Okay, so let me get the camera out here. First off, we have this clue right here, right? And then we have this clue, and then we have this clue. Okay, so let's start with this one. So First I know, oh, go ahead. I know that this and this are true, right? Um, so we just figured that out. And then if you start here and you go one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that helped us a little, but not an awful lot. Go ahead, what are you doing? So we get here, there's a theory. And I go first. Yep, because you're further behind. I'm going to put out nothing. Josh is putting out nothing, which... Okay, we've played this enough times that he could be screwing with me, but he scanned Sector 9. And one of the things that could come up is that the sector's empty, and there is no theory for empty sectors. So if Josh pulled up an empty sector, then he can't put out a theory um, here... Because, like, let's say it was a dwarf planet, he would know for sure it's a dwarf planet. He would place a theory there. Um, since he put nothing, that's actually a clue to me that that could be an empty sector. But like I said, I don't know for sure. It's just a clue. And, um, and so we just put it as a hunch. Um, and so as much as I would love to say I know where a comet is, I could guess. Um, I'm not going to. So I'm going to um, I'm 
I'm also going to pass. So, so now we get to the X1 conference. So we're going to go there, and what we do is we go to our app, and we pull up the first of the two conferences, which is Planet X and Dwarf Planets, and then we get this clue. And I gotta put the camera down while I write that down. <sighs> they like that clue. We've gotten that one in several games now. Okay, so what are you doing? I researched gas clouds and asteroids. All right, so he just did a research which moves them up one. And we're gonna do a similar thing and I'm gonna go ahead and research uh, C. So this was our clue. Okay. So did we just... theories. It's a theory time again? Yeah. I'm not placing anything out. You're not placing anything? I don't have a theory yet either to place. So this is very different than our previous games, but... I think it's all because we just didn't have the four clues, because now it's just, I know absolutely nothing. Except yeah. what I targeted, so, and I will tell you what I targeted is pretty crap. <laughs> in our previous games, we've always given ourselves those four clues. They really do help. Because even if it says that, that Sector 2 is not an asteroid, that's helpful. Um, also, we're being a little more cautious, I think, too. Okay, uh, you're up. You can't research. What you gonna do? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? So I think I'm going to try to move this over so I can put the camera down here. <clears throat> the survey action is really good. It's just that uh, sometimes... Uh, You know, sometimes certain things are, um, sometimes it takes a lot of time. So a target takes four sectors, or four time, but to survey one, two, or three sectors also takes four time. You just did another target? What'd you target? 14. Okay, Josh targeted 14 and he rolled his <laughs> eyes. So chances are he just got another blank sector. <laughs> so... That's the one thing about this, uh, what other players do can be uh, revealing. We're, we're going to know as soon as it's time to place a theory and he puts nothing in 14, uh, there's a good chance that's an empty sector. Um, okay, I'm still, I'm still obsessed with these dang comets. So I'm going to do a survey. And uh, right now, our visible sectors is 10 through 18. Okay. And so if you come here, start at 10, you go to 18, there's, there's only three spots for comets, right? So let me zoom in for you here. There's only three spots for comets between 10 through 18. So we're going to scan that whole range and see how many comets we have. Um, oh, that's right, because it starts in 11, and it goes to 17. All right, so that's going to cost me two time. And there's our answer, okay? So I'm gonna go up one, two time, and we're gonna get one more guess in before uh, this theory has to come out. And so what we got, I'm sorry, I have to put you down again. Okay, so we got we have this clue, okay? We have this clue, 
we have this clue and we have this clue. All right, so if we look at our information here, let's say, let's say that it's here, if there was one here. Yeah, that didn't eliminate anything for me, did it? Dang it, didn't eliminate anything for me. All right, but we're up again. And this time I'm going to target. And I'm going to target. So if I target here, then I know what's there uh, and vice versa. So I'm going to go ahead and target um, this one. And you can only target in your visible sky as well. So that's going to cost me four time. And there's my answer. Okay. So we know this and that from the last clue we had. And then the problem is, is we don't know which of these is the other one. So Josh is moving me up on the time track. And Unfortunately, I bumped up big time, and we get to theory time. So Josh is first. What you doing? No theory. All right, we're going to do one theory, and Josh is going to know what our theory is because we've been myopically focused on this. <laughs> and, um, and in doing so, he'll probably be able to score some points because what you do is you put the theory there, and then at the end of the theory phase, it moves up by one. So eventually, when it gets to here, we do a reveal to see if I'm right. So if we have another theory phase before that happens, which we will, he'll be able to piggyback on that, and we just gave him some points. So what he doesn't know is the rest of the stuff that we know, but he probably knows what that one is. Just like he gave us some answers as well. <laughs> My luck is awful <laughs> when targeting crap. Game I played at Mom's. Found Planet X my first target, but obviously it was nothing. Great. What you doing now? I am surveying for gas clouds. Range? 14 to 4. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> How much did you move? Two. Two. One, two. All right, so then this moves up to here, and then we put out more theories. So we could try to put out another theory if we wanted. Um, I'm not sure I want to. You know, when you've given me this sheet that orients it differently than the board, it actually does throw me off. Next time I'm taking I a sheet. I can't make it perfect for you. Well, it, I'm on the summer side. I just needed a summer sheet. I just pull up the top. I know, but that's what I'm saying is it's throwing me off. But Too uh, bad. See all the edges that he needs to win this game? <laughs> um, I'm not going to put out any theories right now. And we know what Josh is going to do. He's for sure going there, and I guarantee you I know what that is. <laughs> um, and then they both move up. <laughs> okay, so moving on. It is now our turn. I'm going to go ahead and do a research. And I'm just checking real quick. We haven't done B, D, or F. And we're going to do uh, D. Let's see what D says. Oh, interesting. <laughs> All right, and then move me up by one on the time. And unfortunately, this is still what I have. Um, I circled these with a question mark here and here. That one we know for sure. These ones we don't, we know for sure. 
and then these are all question mark there. And uh, yeah, we're still, starting off with zero clues is definitely a, a big setback compared to having at least four clues, but go ahead. This is so what did you just do? I surveyed for dwarf planets, 16 to 6. Okay, um, so now we have the second Planet X conference right now. So we now do the second one and we have this clue. So very similar clues. And by the way, Josh gets the exact same clue I do uh, for research and Anytime we do a research action or this, uh, we always get the same exact clue. Now, if we started the game with four bonus clues or whatever, like we were talking about, Josh and I do get different clues there. That part is interesting. Um, all right, so it's our turn, and I'm... I don't think I can research again, right? We already did that? Yeah. So I'm going to survey for an asteroid, and my visible sky is 17 through 7. I'm going to start at 17. I can do one, two, or three sectors. I guess I should try to find that other comet, but um, I'm going to go 17 through 3. So move me up 3 time. And this is what I found. Now I wish I could tell you what this clue means, and maybe some of you know what this clue means, but this is an extremely important clue right here. Because what that's telling me is this. Because we know this information right here, right? So, um, and then we also know this information here. What did you just survey for? Asteroids. So we also know this information. Okay, we got this as our answer. So that means... Asteroids, what to what? 17 to 3. So that means this. And not that, not that, not that. And we already know all of these are out because we already know what's in 17. And because of our clues, we also know this. And we know, because of the Planet X conference, that that's out, and that's out. So it was a big winter chicken dinner kind of thing. But now we got to wait for Josh to take a few turns here. And the problem is, is I'm telling you guys stuff on this video and he's figuring it out just because I'm trying to be cryptic and he knows damn well that I found something. <laughs> and he probably knows what I found and now he's really starting to... Whereas if I wasn't talking to the video, I could have been completely silent about it and he wouldn't know. I researched E, asteroids and comets. They're always adjacent to one comet. So, looking at this, see here what we know? 
this one, I mean, all these are still in play, right? Because they're all, and they're also within the, the range that we are looking for. So I haven't gotten any closer to limiting, although this one's out. We know this one's out, actually. I'm sorry. Elijah Johnson. Okay. All right. And um, you move up one. So he gets to go again. That's the problem with getting those juicy actions. But uh, we have to resolve this first. We put up two theories, and it starts with him. So he doesn't get to see what we do. <laughs> so that part's nice. Um, what you doing? You're doing nothing? All right, I got to check my sheet because it doesn't line up with your stuff. But we're going to go here and there. And then they move forward. And so what we did was this comes to the end. And so we do a reveal. So you can see we have a comet. And Josh put a comet. Big surprise there in sector 17. So we do a peer review. And we say uh, sector 17, and we're looking for comets. And boom, it confirms that that was a comet. So what's going to happen here is we scored points. And uh, we scored three points, in fact. And then we're going to score a bonus point because we were the first one there that Josh doesn't score. He's going to score three as well. Now, let's say it was wrong. Then those tokens are out of the game forever, and you lose one time. Um, so... Uh, it's still very helpful to be wrong sometimes, but you do lose one time. Now, Josh is up. What are you smiling about? I surveyed for gas clouds 1 to 7. Okay, so you surveyed gas 1 to 7. See, we haven't even searched for those yet. Um, so what happens is this moves up to there, and then it's our turn. And we're going to do a research, because research only costs one time, and that always gives us nice information. We only have B and F left, so I'm going to do... Um, there's dwarf planets and gas clouds, or gas clouds and asteroids. I'm going to do gas clouds and asteroids, which is B. And there we go. Interesting. So I'm going to put the camera down and write that down. So what that means... is we could have in here. And remember this rule right here. And we have this possibility, right? So that means this is a possibility. See? Could be. Not sure, but could be. All right, uh, did you move us up one time? Yes, no, no. All right, so Josh is up, and uh, we're both sitting on the same time, but he was there first, so he gets to go first. And then we're gonna have two more theories to put out, and uh, Josh is probably smart enough to know how to follow us on those. <laughs> He's already got them <laughs> set up. <laughs> we're not done doing that yet, but go ahead. What you doing?
your brain starts to really no melt after a bit. And, uh, and I feel bad because I know of those of you who are watching, this isn't a great game to record because I have a lot of thoughts and I can't even tell you what I'm thinking because that's going to tell Josh. I mean, the other thing I can do is he keeps getting texted by his friend so I can tell him to go call his friend in the garage so then I can give you a recap of what I'm thinking. <laughs> so uh, we may do that. Um, what are your thoughts here? What are you doing? Um... You want to do it. You know you do. Oh, we use one of our targets, so um, this needs to be. So what'd you do? I surveyed gas clouds three to six. All right, so that should be a good four-time pump for you. Three. Three. Okay. And then uh, it is to us. We can't research this time. So, <clears throat> okay, so looking at our situation, we're pretty convinced we know what these two are. And remember, the, the thing I was complaining about is the sheet that we should have had would be more oriented like this, right? Because, see, sector three and four is sector three and four. Okay, so that, that's more the way the board looks. So we're pretty convinced we know what these are and this. And then even just by inference, we have these three guesses that we have good guesses for, but we aren't sure. So my question would be is what's in here, right? There's three spots there that are pretty valuable. And then we got this whole range of stuff we don't know anything about. Um, so I'm thinking let's figure out where those other asteroids are. And we know these are here, so I can include them in my range. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to survey, and the reason I would do that is because I want to survey a big range, right? We're going to survey for asteroids, and I want to do a large range because it costs less time. And you can see the time is displayed up here. So I want it to only cost two or three time and not four. So I'm going to start in... Uh, Josh already knows that we put asteroids down because that's what he did too. <laughs> um, that's not a big thing. So we're going to start in three, which is in our visible band. And this means that we're going to get an answer of two because two asteroids are definitely in the range. We know that. And so I'm going to go up to 11, and what I want to see is, are we going to get a 3 or a 4? That's what I'm looking for. And there's our answer. Okay? So what that means for us is we can now cross off a bunch of stuff. So we know... I did three sector 3 to 11, Josh. So we know this, this, this this, this, and then we have basically, I'm going to do this. I'm going to just draw, and that's, right? So there's somewhere in that range, because we just basically cut the galaxy in half and no matter what answer it gave us, it was going to tell us which side of the galaxy those two asteroids are on. We don't know which sectors, of course, but we at least eliminated a portion of the galaxy. Now, that caused me to go up... I did 3 to 11. Let me just do 2 time. Okay, that's what I was, that's what I was trying to figure out. So I go up 2 time. Um, so we have to we have to resolve this, which is the theory. Josh put his out, but I didn't put mine out yet. So I want to do something real quick. I want to explain to you some of my logic without giving too much away to Josh. We know... Um, so let me orient it the way the board's oriented. 
we know that this or this is true. I'm going to guess one of them. And if I'm right, I get points. If I'm wrong, I at least know what the other one is. Okay? I'll at least know it's at the other location. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to guess this one right here. And that's just a rabbit out of the hat thing. But based on that little bit of clues that we had, I'm going to start doing some guesses because I want to score some points. All right? And the, just the fact that I'm telling Josh that I'm guessing um, sort of ruins the game a little bit, um, but it is what it is. So I'm doing this on sector five. Okay, and then we're going to do this. And I want to do that on sector 13. So there we go. All right. So Josh already moved forward a bunch of them. So these move forward and those move forward, right? And that's it. So uh, now it's Purple's turn, which is us. We get to go again. And I'm leaning towards, should I just try to target something? Uh, yes. And here's where my thoughts are. See this? We know that between there and there, right? we have this. So let's figure out where it is. So we're pretty sure it's probably not here, right? Um, we also know it could be there or any of these, right? Um, we already know that those exist. So it's really not that many spaces. So I could do a target and have it tell me exactly what's in a certain space. Um, or I could just do another survey. I don't know which one's more valuable, but I think I'm going to target one of these because it'll tell me, it'll help me eliminate some stuff too. So um, uh, I'm going to use my last target and I just want to make sure, Josh, you targeted 9 and 14. So uh, I'm going to target... I'm going to target 10. And look at what I got. All right. So I go up four time. And then what that tells us is this. That was valuable. And it also tells us this. Also valuable. Um, very interesting. But I think uh, I think we're doing well here. <clears throat> then see you have uh, this. Okay. Clue there. So what that tells us is uh, this is out. And so is this. And then this and this are also out. <laughs> that makes sense? Yep. Okay, Josh is up. Gas cloud 7 to 14. Okay. And how much time did that move you? Two. One, two, and then we got theories. Yeah, I'm first. You're okay. first. Yep. No, I'm not gonna put anything out. Okay. Um, these are are gonna go on ten and eleven. And then everything moves up. Okay, so these ones get revealed. Surprise, surprise there. Can you punch those in and verify for us? Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, technically we, we know, but we always do it just to be sure. So for example, sector three 
asteroid. Yep. Boom. It's an asteroid. So three and four are both accurate. Those are both asteroids. Did you do four? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we have more confirmations. And we have a whole lot of stuff on this board. <clears throat> but Josh gets to go again because we did an expensive move. So... <clears throat> Now, looking at our, our sheet here, while he's figuring out what he wants to do, um, I'm focused on, like, I think this one might be right. And remember this clue here. Okay, so where can it be? So let's say here, one, two, three four or five, and there's this many, right? So I think that's where they would fit. Now if we go to this side, we got one, two, three. See, I think we can cross those out even. Yes, we can. So keep the 14 for dwarf. Okay, so I just went and crossed these three out because I believe that since we know this and we know this, uh, they can't be there. So what that means then is that it means we got a big stretch of this, which sucks. Right? It could be this, this, or this, right? And we have one, two, three, four of them, all next to each other, which uh, is interesting, very interesting. And then this one, I'm pretty sure is gonna be that. So I think we can start doing some good guessing here. Um, okay, so we are at, how much was your time? Did you do? Two. All right, so it moves up. And we're going to have more theories here. So what can I do to um, narrow down my quest? I think what I can do is if my theory is right, I'm thinking, you know, that range and this range here, right? In fact, I think I already have those figured out. I don't even think I have to do anything. So then it becomes this nonsense. Ugh. Ugh indeed. Um, oh my gosh. I'm going to survey. Oh, dang it. The visible sky is only 9 through 17. Hold on. I don't know. So here's my, my problem. I can only survey 9 through 17, and I'm pretty sure I got most of this figured out. I mean, I guess I could try to make sure that this really does come up. Sure, let's do that. Um, that'll give us a feel good for our logic. Um, so we're going to survey dwarf planets 9 through 17. And if I'm right, we should get... Ooh, ooh, I need to think my logic here. All right.
Okay. So what does that tell us? Well, let's start with nine. Uh, that moves me up two time, by the way. And so we're gonna have to do theories here first. So we got this one here. Uh, we know these are out, right? Uh, we know that one's out. This one I guessed, and I may have been wrong in my guess. So that means, yeah, that means one, two, and then this would be three. So that would mean these two, if we go, that would mean he's hiding over here, which is possible. Um, very possible, in fact. So I think this one was an inaccurate guess. And I think what that told us is it has to be those right there. All right. Sorry I'm having to speak cryptically. I'm probably still giving Josh a huge advantage over me. Um, did you decide what you're going to... Oh, we have to do theories. Mm -hmm. Did you do two? Mm -hmm. So you did five and 13. You're following your father. You know you're not going to win if you do that, right? Um, okay, so do you know if there's a rule? Can I put a second theory in the spot I've already put a theory? As long as it hasn't been revealed, I think I can, right? Sure. So what I'm going to do is this one there, and then this one, uh, let me check. There. Okay, so then everything moves forward. These are going to get revealed. And so will these. So let's start with this one. Well, we do the... Okay, we'll do this one first. first. Um, sector 5 we have is a comet. Josh also said it was a comet. Josh is going to peer review it for us. This was a complete guess for us. You're a poo-poo head. Yep, it's a comet. It's a comet? <laughs> we guessed correctly, ha-ha. <laughs> all right, so that means all the other comets are out because we know all the other ones. Okay, then sector 13. Um, this is the guess that we're pretty sure is wrong. And then that's the one that's right. What did I target again? I targeted 9 and... 14. 9 and 14. So this is what, sector 13? And I'll do dwarf planet first, because that's the one we think it is. And it is. All right, so I lose one time for being wrong. But these stay right. And Josh actually gets the bonus point for being first. And it is Josh's turn. <laughs> what a loser. So the only research we haven't done is dwarf planets and gas clouds. That would actually be an interesting one to do. So we're gonna probably do that next time. Get some more information. Um, so I think, uh, while, while he's deliberating, I know my uh, chicken scratch is hard to, to see here, and my camera work isn't awesome, but I think we have this big area here that we're probably just going to have to make a blind guess. And uh, this was wrong, so... Well, we got it right and wrong, right? But we know for sure that that's the way it is. We know for sure that these are out. I mean, sometimes crossing things out is more messy than just leaving it in. Um, so we have this situation. And remember, one, two, three. That means this one has to be it. And that means these ones are out. Okay. So there's a lot of information you get from 
knowing that something's not there. It's almost as important as knowing that something is, uh, because this one has to be here because of this rule. Um, right, this rule right here. Oh, dad, you son of a gun. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure one of these is that, but gosh darn it, which one? And then the other one is gonna be this, right? But here's the thing. I don't need to know those unless I wanna just score more points. Um, what that does is that likely means that this is not the case, right? I'm not gonna cross them out yet because I don't know, but it likely means that uh, these are not, not that because of this rule here. Okay, and now why am I thinking that these are here? Well, because these are here, and we have we have this one rule that says, um, well, we have this rule, right? And we also have this rule. Okay, well, that's how. Right? So, and if you look, if one of them was here, then the other one would be one, two, three, here, right? And so that would mean one of these would be it, and then the other one would be, you know, this. So I'm thinking that is what we're looking at. So that's just a question of what's, where is the other one of these? And, um, well, I'm gonna just gonna tell you right now, I, I know where Planet X is, but as of right now, if I guess Planet X, you have way too many theories that are gonna beat me, so I can't guess Planet X right now. So I'm just going to research asteroids and dwarf planets. Okay. One, then that happens. You get to go again. Yep, and then now I'm gonna do this, that. Oh, 11 to 1 gas clouds. You did 11 to 1 gas clouds? Yep. Nothing there. You're a big stinky head. Why is that? Just because. All right, we're gonna also do uh, gas clouds. Survey? Yeah, 11 to one. So that moves us up two time, and we got that answer. So what I think that means for us is because we know I think it means this right here. And then that would mean this one is that. And we know. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, one of these is the other one. That's the problem. Which one? No clue. Um, I'm willing to bet that if we did research, we're going to find out that it's directly opposite a dwarf planet. 
All right, so we have to do uh, theories. Mm -hmm. And as usual, you're first. Okay. And so I'm going to take... Um, I'm still doing one more. I just don't know what the heck I want to do. All right, so see, he put a theory on one. And if you look at one, that's what I have. So I think he got it. I really do. Uh, if I if you put what I think he did, and so I have the option to do this, but then I don't score a bonus point because I'm not the first one there. So I'm going to go for the bonus points to really rub it into Josh. So we're going to put one on 16, and. Uh, the other one on 18. All right, and then we're going to move everything down. So we're gonna get some reveals here. Yeah, I don't know how I can, that's already, yeah. All right, so. Asteroids. These are asteroids. You wanna peer review them to make sure? Mm -hmm. They're both asteroids. Okay. Um, now I get to go first? Yep, you get to go. Oh. My chicken scratch is not helping me here. It says you can survey for empty sectors. Yeah, you could probably do that. What'd you just do? I surveyed for empty sectors 14 to 17. Interesting. So from 14 to 17, my guess is you found one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? So, I think we, uh, I think I'm screwed. That's what I think. Um, we're going to locate Planet X. And so, I'm going to say that it's there. And so now I have to say what's next to it. And it's not enough to just be right. So here, I'm going to say that it's that. And there, I'm going to say it's that. And it's going to cost me five time. And I failed. So, oh my gosh, yes. So I know for sure. Uh, well, I know that this isn't it, assuming I got both sides of it right. But I'm going to assume that I did, so I'm going to cross that out. And yes, I lost a lot of time. And now we move up and we get to place more theories. And we only have one left. So Josh is placing a theory on six, which is one of the ones that we thought. What do you even have? So he just put a theory on six. Okay, and remember we had this, so I'm betting that that's there, and then that's there. So that would mean that this is it. 
right? And then uh, it doesn't matter if it's six or one. I'm gonna vote that Josh put the same thing in either one. So we're gonna go ahead and go on the one. And then uh, go ahead and move them all down. So, yep, 15 there. That is correct. So 15, Dwarf Planet, we nailed that one. Unfortunately for us, Josh gets a lot of turns because we are way up ahead of him in time. That's the problem with guessing Planet X and being wrong. But we are in expert mode and I tend to do this. Because to me, it's worth the five time to just know that this isn't the right sector. Uh, whatever other scanning I can do isn't going to help me because empty sectors are empty sectors and when you know where the empty sectors are it doesn't tell you which one's planet x you just got to start okay. eliminating i did one to five for empty sectors <laughs> so, so you did one to five yep and then now we do more theories i don't have any left Yeah, you figured those out, didn't you? I know everything, Dad. I figured it out all before you. It's just the problem is you have so many theories that are first that it doesn't matter. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Oh, look at all those points I'm getting there, Josh. Yeah, screw you. Oh, your turn. It's my turn. We're gonna try to locate Planet X again. Yeah, you will. Uh, this time, we're gonna try Boy, is this brutal. We're gonna try this one. And for that one, we're gonna say it's that. And for that one, that. We got it. So now we got 10 points for getting it right. <laughs> and I got 10 as well. Cause I'm five ahead of you? Yep. All right. So um, I think I won this. Yeah, you did, even though I tried to. So Josh may have figured it out, but uh, the problem was is I put him in a pickle because I got so many of my theories right. So I got 10 points for getting Planet X. <laughs> then for the dwarf planets, I got all four of them correct, so I have eight. And then for the comets, I only got one of them correct, which is a four. I'm sorry, I meant that gas clouds. For the comets, I got both of them correct for six. And then the asteroids, I got all four of them. I'm sorry, that's eight points, not four. Um, and then for, this is where I'm killing him, is the bonus points. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine theories were out there before his. So I got nine extra bonus points. That's almost as good as getting Planet X. And that's what Josh was concerned about. This is the best score I've ever gotten. Um, so... That's 16, and 6 is 22, 26, 35, 45 points. 39. 39 is still pretty good. Um, but yes. As soon, okay, I, what, what was my breakthrough was I did. So they do have this, by the way, where you say end game, and it tells you what every single sector is. So you can have your discussion like we're doing right now. 8 to 14 was one dwarf planet and you put a thing here and I was like it is here because I did also I did 16 to 6 and there were two dwarf planets see sometimes and so placing these theories gives so much information to the other player yeah because I was like well <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said this was a dwarf planet and this is a comet so yep. I placed those two theories down before they went through so I could at least get points for them because that's my that was my dilemma. I was thinking of placing this next theory phase to asteroids to yeah. follow you, but I did a cloud and asteroid instead, but then you just did two more of these planets. So you got the extra point for that, and all I could do was just follow suit because I just needed more time to place my theories out because now that I knew everything. And um, anyways, I thought this was the dwarf, and if I already knew that these weren't dwarf planets then you're pretty much going to have to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And I knew this was empty because I <laughs> targeted it. 
and this was a comet, so I knew bing, 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 then I had, I think we had planet X is not opposite of dwarf planets, so all of this was done. I scanned from seven to one for gas clouds, and there were two of them in here. And so now I was, and then you found these three, so I'm like, well, crap, it's one of these and one of these. So um, when you guessed six wasn't whatever you thought it was, then I knew it was six. We never guessed six. I know, some, you, I think, I don't know, there was something that made me know it was here. And then, yeah, I did 11 to 1 for gas clouds. And um, I got one gas cloud, so I knew it was here. So, um... But I knew all of this, and I knew Planet X was here at 8 with two empty sectors next to it. But you just had so many of these that I couldn't... Like, if I guessed it, you might have actually gotten it wrong, so I get 10 more points. I might have actually won. But I probably would have just placed two theories and taken well, more yeah, points you would, that way. You would have just placed two theories to get points. And by the way, when you guess Planet X, the other players get one more turn. And based on how far behind you they are, they could either guess Planet X themselves, and then they get points based on, you know, the scale here. So if you're one behind the player who guessed it, you only get two points. If you're five behind, like Josh was, he got ten. Or you're allowed to place two more theories um, and just take the points that way because you at least know where everything else is. Um, that's probably what I would have done what if you would have... What did you guess first for Planet X? Nine. Because mm. I knew these were both... So so what I was trying to tell the viewers is I knew one and two were um, something, like, but I knew it wasn't Planet X because it's across from the asteroids. See that? Because mm. we know Planet X is not across from the asteroids, right? Um... Or we knew that a gas cloud was Wait, across from the asteroids. You knew... Oh, yeah, you didn't know this at the time. I knew gas clouds were opposite of asteroids, right? That's the reason why I guessed that this was a gas cloud at first. Because well, I was just doing an asteroid guess. If you knew 18 was a dwarf planet, then 9 couldn't have been planet X. So pretty much you didn't know that then. You know what? I... I think you actually should have known it by then. I should have known it and I screwed up. Yeah. So I'm sure some viewer will comment at that point in the video and say, you moron. <laughs> but yes, I, I guess nine first. Um, and I didn't even pay attention to the clue that it's not opposite of a dwarf planet. This was one of the planet ones that I inferred from all the other ones because they're in a band of six, right? Mm -hmm. So since we knew this one was here, then this had to be there because that's the only way six away. Because I didn't know this, this, or this. So I knew that one had to be there. And then because of the asteroid thing, I knew one of these was gas and the other one was empty. So what I wrote for the viewers was not X, right? I knew that those weren't X. But then we had, and you probably heard me talking about it, there was this big gap of four sectors here that were um, just hellacious. And then I kept counting, you know, because gas clouds are within a band of six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. The gas cloud could be here or it could be here. And so I went with nine thinking, okay, well, I at least know what this is and I know what this is. Uh, I didn't know what this was. But then as soon as you put a theory here on six, I was like, okay, that's the gas cloud. So that means this one's empty. And that's what allowed me to get it right. And um, yeah, that's the, that's the problem with, you know, since you could put theories out, that sort of helps the other player to figure out, okay, that's the gas cloud, and this one's not. Yeah, I put that there because I did. I just didn't want you to... Oh, you couldn't have put out another gas cloud anyway. No. So I should have paid attention to that because I would have gone more for... Yeah, but you had no putting... theories left. Yeah. That was the end of the game. I was just trying to counter counteract your points, and then I was making sure that I just did a random survey for... I honestly, spaces. I honestly don't know if you could have beat me in this game. Yeah. I mean, I had an early on with these asteroids all being right. I mean, that's four bonus points right there. Yeah, and I followed suit in almost everything you did, and I knew you were correct. But with zero information, I was just like, <laughs> first of all, two to ten, one gas cloud. Oh, yeah, that helps me. Okay, um, it's somewhere in there. Then 14 to 4. So I kind of scanned this half of the galaxy galaxy, and this half of the galaxy. And I found one here and one here. 
So, so I'm like, what the heck? So the big breakthrough that allowed me to start just hammering out theories is, and I, and I couldn't explain it to the viewers at the time, but I did something like 14 to 3 uh, asteroids. You did like 17 to 3. 17 to 3. That's so it was what a it was. big range, right? And you, I, and I, I got a one. Yep. When you, I was like, wait a minute, there's four as. That's what I thought at first. There were four asteroids. But as soon as you placed on the theory of that and that, then I knew that, okay, he's, he surveyed for asteroids and he plus, placed one in one of the places he surveyed and then the other one wasn't. So that must mean this is an asteroid and that's an asteroid. And yes. then at the time, I knew that from two to, or one to seven was two gas clouds. And so you're, you just helped me with these two. I helped you eliminate two of them, yeah. Yeah, and so now and, I'm just sitting here. And we knew what 17 was because that was the yeah, comment. Yeah, that was the very first one we so, figured out. So when I got an answer of one, and this is just for the viewers who haven't figured it out yet, when you get an answer of one, asteroids have to be next to each other. So that means you got the first of the asteroids but not the t second. So that means the asteroid has to be on your edge of your scanning range. So it was either 17 or 3. We knew it wasn't 17 because we already knew it was a comet. So it had to be 3. And that's the reason why I placed 3 and 4 like I did. And then we had the clue that a comet is always next to an asteroid. This one wasn't. And there was a comet here and another comet there. And that's where I guessed. So I, And the reason I guessed is because I also had a clue that said comets were like within 7 of each other. And I really believe that if the comet was really here it would have said the comets within four of each other or something like that. Like, the game sort of, like, you can sort of predict what the game's doing because when it says within seven, I think the one on the outer range is always your better bet in this game. I, you can almost cheat the game a little bit understanding that. Um, I wish the AI was a little more tricky, but it's not. Um, and so this was a guess that I did. I mean, yes, it was a guess. I didn't know for sure, but I think it was a good one. And, and of course, it the game played exactly the way I thought it would. Yeah. But yes, that was the thing. That that was my edge one, and I got a one for asteroid, and it's like ding ding because I didn't know what any of these were, Josh. And and so if I would have gotten a two, that wouldn't have been helpful at all. Oh, and, and you did, and then you did three to eleven, and uh, then you were talking about how oh we eliminated half of the galaxy and we know which part it on it's on now. So I just figured from what you were talking about that you just eliminated this whole side of the galaxy so it's on this side <laughs> or i could have eliminated this side and knew it was on that side but yes oh from the way you were yeah. talking i knew it was this side oh. <laughs> so you just so, gave me more information than it was over there so that's what brings me greater joy is i kept revealing so much information to the viewers that was helping you and i still beat you <laughs> uh it's just because you're you you had a breakthrough before i did that's literally the whole point because you could get lucky with your survey and if I was able to survey, let's say I started my survey on 13 and went to 18 and I found four dwarf planets, well, yeah, I just found a major breakthrough. <laughs> like, so, it all kind of depends on your survey. In full confession, I was very frustrated. I, this is the hardest the comments have ever been for me to figure out. Like, usually I nail them right away. But I go after them because there's only certain spaces on the board that they're at. And so I figure those are the easiest to go after. You went after the gas clouds, which I think the, the thing that hurt you was you targeted twice and you got empty sectors both times. Yeah. I, that, that hurt you so much. And I targeted it and did not get empty sectors. I got, I don't really remember which ones I did. You targeted 13. Uh, you targeted 9, wait, no. 11 or 10? You targeted 10. That's the only one yeah, you targeted. So I knew that was the other asteroid. And so when, I already knew that it was on this half, and then I targeted 10 because I knew it was either here or over here, right? And so I was like, okay, well, let's eliminate well, these two. I targeted nine, so... Which was empty. Which was empty. So if you targeted ten and it was an asteroid, then you know 11 is... The other one. The other one. Which is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you targeted 14, which I always thought was a possibility of it being planet X, but then we got this clue that it's not opposite or whatever. So um, anyways... It's just, it's, yes, I did get lucky and there were some good deductions. I think the asteroids are fun to scan for because they're always next to each other and you know that. So if you can figure out where one is, you can, you obviously know what the other one is. And that's two, that's two theories you can pop down for four points. 
Anyways, I hope uh, you guys enjoyed this video. We're not going to be recording any more playthroughs, but uh, we've been really enjoying this game, uh, Josh and I in particular, uh, and we borrowed it from one of my game night buddies. Um, it's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. It's very puzzly, and there's going to be certain family members or friends that are, this is not going to be good for them. And, um, you know, don't, don't even try uh, with some of them. Because uh, they're just not going to get it and they're going to get frustrated and try to flip the table. Um, but uh, it's a fantastic puzzle game. It's a good deduction, elimination type thing. And uh, highly recommend it. And especially once you get the hang of it, do the expert side. The five empty sectors are brutal. Um, this game is so much easier to figure out on the, on the basic side. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. And as always, stay awesome.